The lesson objective for this video, students use properties of parallelograms to solve problems. So first of all, what is a parallelogram? A parallelogram is a quadrilateral where both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. A quadrilateral where both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. So in my figure here, the top is parallel to the bottom, and then the two sides would be parallel to each other also. So the first two properties of a parallelogram that you need to know about is that the opposite sides are congruent both pairs of opposite sides. So in the figure you can see that um, QP is congruent to RS and QR is congruent to PS. And both pairs of opposite angles are also congruent. So angle P is congruent to angle R and angle Q is congruent to angle S. So we can use these properties to solve problems. So we'll start off with an example here. I'm going to find the values of C and D in this parallelogram. Well, I see that um, this top side is represented by the expression 4C plus 5, and the bottom side is represented by the expression 7c minus 13. And because it's a parallelogram, I know that those two sides are congruent. So that means that their measures are equal. So 7c minus 13 would have to equal 4c plus 5. And then it's just an Algebra 1 problem. We subtract 4c from both sides and add 13 to both sides. When we do that, we get 3c is equal to 18. And so when you divide by 3, we have that c is equal to 6. Then if we look in our um, figure here, I have opposite angles here. And same thing, those opposite angles are congruent to each other. So that means that their expressions would also have to be equal. So 10d minus 27 would have to equal 6d plus 9. And so again, I can use algebra to solve it. I subtract 6d from both sides and add 27 to both sides. And then I have 4d is equal to 36. So when you divide by 4, we find that d is equal to 9. So now I have one for you to try on your own. I want you to find the values of x and y and um, using those properties. So pause the video now. All right, so you should have gotten that x was equal to 7 and y was equal to 68. Another property of parallelograms is that consecutive angles of parallelograms are supplementary. Which, if you think back to when we learned about parallel lines, if I look at QR and PS as parallel lines and QP as a transversal, X and Y are consecutive interior angles um, between parallel lines. And so whenever we have consecutive interior angles, 
they are supplementary, which means they add up to 180 degrees. And the same would be, yeah, the same would be true if I was going across, going horizontally or going vertically. Whenever they're right next to each other, consecutive, they're supplementary. All right, so we can use this property to solve another problem. We're going to find the values of x, y, and z on this figure. So first of all, to find x, I know that my opposite sides are congruent to each other. So that means that 2x minus 3 has to equal 37. If we add the 3, we get 2x is equal to 40. And divide by 2, x is equal to 20. Then um, I use my opposite angles here, y and 123 have to be congruent. So y is going to equal 123 degrees. And then last of all, I'm going to use the fact that these are consecutive interior angles and add them together. And when I add them together, they have to add up to 180. So essentially, Z is just going to be 180 minus 123. And so we get that Z is equal to 57. All right. Here's another one for your notes. On this one, we're going to find A and B. So <clears throat> I know that um, 106 plus 7A minus 3, those are consecutive interior, so they're going to have to act equal 180. So if I combine my like terms, the 106 minus 3, I get 103 plus 7a equals 180. And then if we subtract 103 from both sides, 7a would equal 77. So when we divide by 7, we get that a is equal to 11. And then since these angles are across from each other, I know they're congruent. So 9b minus 2 has to equal 106. So if we add the two, we get 9b is equal to 108. And so B would have to equal 12. All right, so here's one for you to try on your own. Try and find the values of F and G. Go ahead and pause the video now. All right, so to solve for F, you should have added F plus 30 and 72 and set them equal to 180. If I combine my like terms, F plus 102 equals 180. And so F is equal to 78. And when you solve for G, opposite sides are congruent. So 8G minus 3 has to equal 25. You end up getting that G is equal to 3.5. One more property regarding diagonals. Um, the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. Okay, diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. So in my figure then, um, we can see that QM is congruent to SM, 
and PM is congruent to RM. So we can solve the problem then using that. Example 3, if nm is equal to 2x minus 15, we're going to find the value of x. So nm is this segment here. So if this is 2x minus 15, well, I know that kn and nm are congruent to each other. So that means that 2x minus 15 is going to have to equal 2. So adding 15 to both sides, I get the 2x is 17. And then if we divide by 2, x would be 8.5. Then for part b, we're going to find the measure of km. Well, that's just the two sides added together. 2 plus 2, km is going to equal 4. Angle JML is talking about this angle right here, JML, and they gave me 110 for that whole angle KJM. So because I know those two have to add up to 180, I can just take 180 and subtract 110 and I know that angle JML would then be 70 degrees. Then to find angle KML, now we're talking about this angle here, KML. Part of it is 30, and the whole thing is 70. So we just have to do 70 minus 30. And we get that angle KML would be 40 degrees. So we have another example here. The diagonals of parallelogram STUV intersect at point W. Find the coordinates of W. So because the diagonals bisect each other, that means that W is the midpoint. It's the midpoint of both SU and TV. So if I just use the endpoints of one of those segments to find the midpoint, then I'll know the coordinates of W. So I'm going to go ahead and use SU. I can see that S is at 0, 0. And U is at 6, 5. So if I want to find the midpoint, I just average my x's and average my y's. So 6 plus 0 over 2, which is 6 over 2, and 0 plus 5 over 2, or 5 over 2. And then if I go ahead and simplify that, I find that w is at 3, 2.5. And that is the midpoint, w. That concludes this video. Thank you.